okay welcome guys so today's topic is configure email in out systems using gmail as an smtp provider so what are the steps involved to trigger email in out systems first we have to configure the smtp server configuration in the service center right what type of smtp we are going to use it requires um uh, server detail require the port require the username password and other fields we 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 see we'll see how we can configure that second it 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 requires to design a email template um you have seen right uh, when we got an email sometime we get a complete html page in the email so that is that is called a template so it requires us to design a template and third write a logic to send an email logic in the sense a server side logic so, and because email is a server side property so we'll see how we can configure first how we can design a template and how we can write a logic so let's begin let's jump to the out systems for that let me create a new application so we can create an application this is my service today i hope you all are aware about the service studio and how we can create a application i will create from scratch a simple reactive web application i will create just give a name email and we'll select a proper um color theme and create an application so this is the reactive application what we are creating and uh, it it ask us to create our first module and as we are going to uh, create a ui application and we we are going to give a ui to the user from from ui user will be able to trigger the email so our first module should be reactive web application in this in this case so this is my application let me publish first what we'll do we'll first design the template and at the end we will see the configuration part so we'll design a template a simple template where a simple form where user will be able to fill the to email cc email subject and uh, and just uh, uh, a send button uh, on click of send button we will trigger the email and we will hard code the content of the email right for now so let me create a screen for that and this will be my email screen to create a screen we just right click to the main flow and this is how we create the screen in this way we will include that screen directly in the menu so out system automatically will handle the um, many menu inclusion activity okay so this is my title of this screen now i will require a form and in that form i will require three fields uh, three text field will be there one will be associated to uh, to email second will be subject and uh, we will have cc as well so for that uh, i will require three variables right where i will hold the user inputs so instead of uh, creating three variables i will create a structure because uh, the same structure i will use in the um, attachment part as well when when we will see that so let me create a structure and this is my email structure i will have the um two two email then cc cc address and then subject okay we can and later on we'll see how we can attach file first let's see the simple version of emailing so here i will require one local variable that will hold all these values so let me create the local variable and automatically our system is smart enough it sensed that we have a email structure and we are writing the name as a email so it automatically bind it for us and it it bind it correctly right so this is my email now let me add a form on the main content so that under form i will directly drag and drop the email and it will create the fields for me so let me add a form just drag and drop and drag and drop this object here automatically it has created the fields for me i could also create fields one by one but out system is smart enough a lot of things a lot of general things 
it it does automatically for us so why don't we use that right this button will be my trigger email or send email button okay that's it i have my two field i have my cc field where i will just write to cc and subject and this is my send button uh, by default button does not comes with a on click event handled so we will require to take care of that activity so uh, that's why it is giving error because we will have to handle the on click event so just click here and click on new client action so automatically it will create a new client action for us for now there is no need to validate the form we can remove otherwise automatically out system included the form validation as well because we use the form widget that is the automatic binding of form widget and the validation so here i will call the email server action because email is a server side property this is the client action so from here we can call the server with the inputs and server will take care and act accordingly let me go to the server to create the email to create the email server action so under server action folder i will right click and add a server action this will be my send email and uh, my send email will again require the same thing what i have here this email right so either i can take three input to cc and subject or i can have one input as a type of structure what i have recently created right so i can just uh, have one input parameter i hope i am clear right you understand what i am doing yes sir. okay email structure here i will have three fields two cc and subject that i will use to trigger the email now if you see this is the server action and we have some server side widgets which we can use to perform certain type of operation we have a send email widget automatically available by default available i will say so we can use this widget to send the email send the email now it will require a from right so either i can give uh, this is not a mandatory field that's why that's why it is not giving error but if i give here so it will use that particular email to send otherwise whatever default i have configured it will uh, use that so we'll see that uh, what we need to put here two will be my email dot two whatever coming from consumer from ui cc will be again it is not a mandatory field but we are getting that then we can um, we can just use now it will require a email template so the, the complete template whatever we design it will be a like a form or like a html page we will give complete html page here and it will just send send to the um, whoever we are sending and also we have a section from where we can attach a file we'll see that later so i will require to I, I don't have any email template available so i will just click on new and i will just select the empty email or we have some uh, predefined templates as well reset password and welcome so just i will use the welcome okay and uh, welcome create email so this is by welcome template available customer name and company name i can pass also i can pass i, I will pass the subject because i have my own subject right so subject and in this template this is the subject section i will use my subject whatever i am passing from the server action that's it okay this is the default template we can change it we can design our own template based on our requirement we can do whatever we want here it we have the dynamic uh, we can have the dynamic data as well here and uh, um we can design whatever we 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 have to design right but for this this exercise we will just see the simple one how we can trigger the email using gmail that is our main main focus and main purpose okay so we have a welcome email template available now let me go back here here i will use the welcome it requires a company name so i will give my company name so academy is my company and uh, customer name is 
Ankit. I will give the customer name. Or in the two, we have the customer name. Or we can ask for a customer name as well. But uh, for now, I will just hard code it. Company name will be Locademy. And subject I have. Subject is coming from here. That's it. Done. Right. Now what I will do? I will come come here again to my client action, and I will call this email here. After calling, I will require to pass that object of email because it requires one email object that is our structure, right? So we can just give a proper name so that you will not confuse email. Okay, so it requires the email struct. So this will be email struct structure. So you see, it will require email struct, and we have email struct available. Uh, in our local screen, we have created right. So let me give the proper name. After triggering the email, I just want to say done. Okay, that's it, and success. Let me publish and let me show you um, what it says. So let's wait. Any question, guys? Meanwhile, it is publishing. You have any question? Please repeat the email template pass. Ah. So let's wait for some time. The so email template is uh, like uh, screen, not exactly screen, uh, but it is like a HTML page. We can design, we can have tables there, we can have buttons there, we can have, uh, see, we can write CSS for the email template, right? So, um, and we can design whatever we want to design as per the requirement. We can have dynamic data as well. We can pass, uh, you see, we are passing the subject and other things from here. So we can pass the data because in server action, we, we have everything, right? We can get data from database, we can compute data, and we can pass the computed data to template. Connection timeout, something is wrong because I have just created the new environment. That's why probably it is giving this problem. Let's wait for, uh, let's do it one more time. So, uh, so okay, let me now show you. So this is our email template. We can, we can have input parameters here and that input parameter can contain the dynamic data, right? What we, uh, what we can compute from server action or for client action. So we, we can have list here, we can have if, we can have expression to bind the dynamic data, image, links, tables, right? And we can, we can also write a, we can provide a style sheet or we can just customize the style for this email template. So in, in whatever way we want to design, we can design this template. And we can have multiple templates as well. Add email. So email two is a, a screen, and in that screen we just add the. Email no, template. email two is a UI flow. You, we have no. main flow, we have layout, we have this is the UI flow. We can okay. right click and add the email. This is the email template. Mm -hmm. So we have already have an email. That's why it is saying email two. That's it. So let me publish it again. Already it has published. So let me just open that, open in a browser. Also, let me open this service studio, sorry, service center. So we'll just have a look if it is giving any error. So what error we are getting? So let's say it. Sometime our system behave very slow. So uh, teacher. I can log in from my credential. What I use to sign up. Okay, this is my email. And this is my perfect. Okay. Let me trigger one email. So to myself, CC this subject. This is just a test. Okay. Now, 
let's come here let's go to monitoring just to check what error it gives obviously it will give error because we have not configured the email so let's come to monitoring and error log log okay let me trigger okay the email could not be created the default sender email and default sender name must be set in service center's email configuration it gave a straightforward error to us because we'll require to configure the email our first step so let's configure under administration this is my service center under administration i will just uh, go to email you see and here i can configure the uh, my email smtp setup right if i am as i already mentioned if i am using my company's um, domain so i can give the outgoing smtp server address here i will get it from it department i, I will get port as well i can write the default username just the email address for example no reply at the company domain or admin or whatever it is and password associated to that particular uh, email address and the default sender address and default sender and that's it let me search for gmail's smtp configuration gmail smtp detail so for outgoing email we will require smtp gmail.com because we are going to see how we can configure with gmail right and port will require 465 465 username will be my email so it will be my gmail okay and password associated to my this gmail account this is how i do when i use my company's email right company's email address or company's smtp detail default sender name ankit gangarade gmail account okay save 465 is default port no 465 is a port yes, port sir. associated to gmail right it is yes. saying yes. default is 25 i guess let's have a look yeah 25 because when we work with our domain um, uh, company's domain um, hosted to aws or uh, azure anywhere uh, we use 25 but with with gmail it is 465 so we will require to uh, apply the configuring configuration setting to the uh, to the factory so let me do that that's it we are done and let is it possible that default sender name can be uh changed for each application so if we are working in an enterprise uh, uh, account and mm -hmm. we are working for different clients so in that case uh, uh, if i may, i need to uh, send it as a default company name for each client right is it mm -hmm. any way that we can uh, change the default sender sender name for uh, based on the application uh yeah so if we are uh, so if all the applications are on same domain then whatever we define here that will be default but if we want to change then we can change from here we can we can just uh, uh, set the sender name here right we from here like in the subject and uh, when we use the email from here we can change our from okay so when we just change our from then um, on that domain with gmail it is not possible but when we use the deep, uh, domain of our company uh then whatever domain address uh, we we set uh, we mm -hmm. can use any email associated to that that domain uh, although we have configured any specific email address right but we can use any email here but with gmail we cannot do that whatever we have defined here we can we will have to use that only or whatever uh, i will i will tell you after some time when i will uh, set up the password it will not work with this password then i will tell you what what i i am saying here let me first finish this and then we will have uh, questions and answer so i i am done right in a same way when i configure with my company's domain in a same way i do i provide the smtp detail i did, did provide the port i provide the user name and password associated to this email 
I have provided the password. It does not showing here because of the security and uh, default sender name and all, right? And it works very well. Now let me try to send the email again. Okay. Because I will require to pass from here. The default send from is not set here. That's why it is giving error. Okay, let's publish and let's check. So whatever email address we will write here, it will trigger the email with using with this. So we can, this can be dynamic, right? We can have that in the site property or we can have this in the database and we can just uh, configure our database entity where we can put the email address associated to the applications and dynamically we can get uh, with the application what is the configured email and we can use that here. Okay. Okay, let's try now. Okay, perfect. It is saying done. It, it has not given me any error, but let's see the monitoring. Let's see the log. Error sending email application specific password required. Here we talk, right? We have given the password when then we come here again and we see we are giving proper password, but again, it is not triggering email. Why? We put password again, we save, we save and apply settings to factory. We do it again and uh, we didn't get why it is giving this error because when we are working with Gmail, our email specific password will not require here. We'll have, we will require to uh, give the application password, application password associated to our Gmail account. So let's get that. So application password Gmail. Sign in password. How to get a password for Gmail? Okay, it is saying go to Google account security under setting at the bottom of page. Let me just try. So this is my Gmail account, what I have set up. This is my account under security, under two-step verification. And I will require to log in. Perfect. Under two-step verification and at the bottom of page at the bottom of page application password right here we will require to configure for mail application for windows computer generate this is the password i will require to use so let me use this password here okay let me save let me save and apply setting Now, let me send it again without refresh. Let's see what happened. Done. Let me filter. Mm -hmm. We get the error, but let's see if we get the email or not. We got the email. I don't know why we get the error, but we get the email. You see, this is the email, this is the CC. And from a, from email. Any question? You see, it worked. So for that, we'll require application password from Gmail account. Any question, guys? Uh, 
Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not able to hear what you said. You said. Ah, uh, uh, sorry. Like uh, for Gmail, you told to get the app password. So yeah. if you are setting it as from the like our company's email, so do we need to do the same process, or there no. we will? No. No. When we are we are setting it with our company email, then the password associated to this email will give that. Okay. So I tried. So initially I tried the same. I I have given my Gmail password. It hmm. didn't work. So with Gmail, I will require to give the application password, and this was the process to get that. Okay. Okay. And if I have to send uh, change this username and uh, default sender name, I can configure in my system. Um, I can take it from um, from site property or from database entity, and I can just uh, provide a dynamic from here, and it, email will be triggered. from that particular email address in this way for multiple application we can drive we can create a single uh, email application a foundation layer application or foundation layer module and uh, we can just drive uh, the email in a way that it it use a particular email address to trigger the email to the particular application or users of that particular application is it good Yes. Yes. Okay. So now let's have a look how we can uh, send the attachment as well. Okay. So if you see here, where is the server action? If we have a look of the server action, it it gives a straightforward option to attach a file. So it requires a attachment list. Attachment is the structure and the list of that that structure. now let's have a look what we have in that structure so in that structure we will have the file name content and mime type i hope you are able to see yeah file name content and mime type file name is will be the uh, text variable file content will be binary and mime type will be text that is not uh, mandatory field so what we'll do will will have this uh, um, this file as well in in the same format let's let's try to get that from ui so i will add one more attribute and that will be attachment okay type of attachment i will not uh, add a list i will add a single uh, a single object but as for our requirement we can if we have multiple attachments we can create a list and we can pass that list directly so this attachment i will have attachment here as well now let me uh, on my ui let me use the upload file widget so let me design that let me click here go to widget tree under form i will add one more container and this container will be above the send email button under this container i will just put the upload widget so upload widget i will have to give a variable to hold the content what user is uh, uh, selecting so uh, i have attachment and this file content i will use this variable to hold the file name i will use the file name variable that's it now i have my file here after selecting on from ui i will have my file and file name available here let me just get that and i will get here as well when i will pass to this server action right because automatically it handled i am passing the complete send email object send email struct object so it it is here as well right under the scope of send email server action now what i will do i will just give that file like this like this email struct dot attachment so if i have multiple attachment so i can either give the uh, list of attachment directly here or i can have multiple uh, objects of the list right uh, multiple attributes of the list and i can provide individually in both way we can and if it is dynamic directly we can give the list here automatically it will bind with the proper Uh, proper object and attach all the documents whatever coming in under this particular list currently it is a structure it is not a list 
that's it let me just publish and let let's see how it behaves on the ui pretty much straightforward um that was only the tricky part the getting the application password although it was straightforward but in general when developer create that works on that they just um they just not able to figure out how we can get the application password so here is my email let me write an email so i will write to myself again this will be my cc and this is the email with attach man this is just a test email okay let's have a look let me attach a file so i can attach anything let me attach my photo send email perfect and we can refresh the page and we can do whatever we want to do after sending the email that is different thing now let me come here and i got my email and this is my attachment and this is my proper subject what i have given here that's it any question for in, in the attachment part most any question any query from anyone anything what i have not covered and you have any question you want to understand how you will do in email or other than email as well if you have any question we can we can discuss here the ui flow we using for email is uh, by default or we just have to create the ui flow um by default it does not comes here um, we can create we can right click and we can add a ui flow and uh, under the ui flow we can just add the email so by default i i never noticed but we don't get the email ui flow but once we click i clicked here create a new email automatically it created i believe i never noticed that by default we get or not from here right new email when i clicked here uh, yeah so in this way it created the ui flow yeah, by default we don't get but we can create right right click and this is just a folder name email is just the name so we can just uh, create and we can use a proper theme and uh, right click to the flow and we can add the template this is the template Yeah. Okay. Any other question, guys? Any question? Other question? Other than this email part in out systems? Necessary to create structure? No, it is not necessary to create structure. Um. i wanted to uh, so i could explain this uh, via just adding the um variables but i just thought to create structure in a different way i wanted to explain this but we can, we could create the variables as well like this two cc subject and we could use this this variables but um i generally avoid creating multiple variables um, i generally use a structure if i have to deal with multiple variables and i don't have any entity to hold the data then i use structure it looks pretty much straightforward it is maintainable if anybody will see my code he will be able to understand clearly that what is bind to what and why i have created this structure what this structure does so it 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 uh, it uh, so code become maintainable if we use this type of variables any other question guys if you have any other question other than email part then you can also ask we can utilize this time we can utilize this event
No other questions? Are we good, guys? So we are done. We took only 40 minutes, I guess. Yeah, so that's it from email part. Hmm? Or, uh, um, or just we, we have any other uh, function in email? Any other functioning in email? Uh, only thing we don't define, uh, let me share it again. In the same way we use, I have never uh, used in a different way, but we, this template generally we uh, provide dynamic data here in this template. This, there are too many st uh, static data you can see, but the dynamic data we, we provide. So, so in general, we use uh, this email. Uh, so how I have used, um majority of my scenarios what on what on what i worked was related to sending the list sending the progress list sending the report to the higher management right so we we generally calculate the data we create the calculated list we create the calculated graphs and uh, uh, we design our email template in a way that it gives the um, daily report or weekly report something like that so we deal with dynamic data while emailing. If we have to just email just a simple thing to the user like a password reset or email confirmation, then it will be straightforward. But for reporting purpose and other complex purposes, um, we use the dynamic data. We compute data here in the server action before sending the email. And we pass that data to the, this email function. Like all the widgets, uh, widgets that are available for screen are like all of them available for email template also, or are no. there some restrictions? Uh, there are restrictions. So we don't, we, we have only this much uh, only this available. Eight. Okay. Yeah. Table uh, expression, but we have one uh, benefit here. We can have the style sheet. So with CSS, um, CSS plays a very, very important role here. With CSS, we can design our, our uh, simple te text uh, as well in a way that it looks like very, very, uh, very informative, very good, and very beauty beautiful, right? We can beautify our text and our our simple, simple things, right? Using the CSS. So CSS plays a very, very big role here in while designing the email template. But we can use expression, tables, list, images, and links. And we can apply some conditions using this if widget. Okay. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah, we got we got some error while sending the email. We, uh, we we got some error while sending the email. Yeah, initially we got an error, right? Uh, it was related to password, something like that it was saying. Password, right? Then we didn't get, we just fixed that issue. Application is specific password not required. This error we got. Anything else, guys? Any other question? So how can Anything? we use it for the reset password? Huh? Obviously. Well, and we use it. We use it. Uh, we just send a link to uh, reset the password. Then user click on that link. We redirect to our application and we design the logic in that way. Okay. For resetting password, we use email only, right? That is the best way. Yeah. Any other question, guys? Mathili, Nayan, Raghu, Mita, Farhan, Karan.
Okay. If no other question, Supriyo. No, sir. Uh, don't have any question regarding me. Okay, great. So uh, we are good to wrap up. It was a uh, ah. nice event, guys. You joined. Uh, thanks for joining this this event. And I hope uh, I solved some problem and I I taught you a new thing. And future as well, I will have uh, this type of events. Probably next month, I'm going to conduct one event around multi-tenant application how we can create a multi-tenant application and what are the best practices involved. What uh, mistakes generally developers do while, while working on multi-tenant application, we are going to talk on that part. Also, I am going to have one event probably next to next month or we'll see uh, when we can have uh, regarding the timers. Um, in that event as well, we will talk uh, generally what mistakes Developer, even senior developer as well, does unknowingly while dealing with timers. So we'll we'll talk about that stuff. So I will again invite you uh, for for that events, and I will appreciate if you join that event as well. And uh, again, thanks for joining. Thanks for Thank giving you, time. Thank you for your time, sir. My pleasure. So thank you, guys. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, bye-bye, guys. Thank you, bye.